The next kind of valid deductive argument to for, form to look at is what we call a hypothetical syllogism. And a hypothetical statement is are these if-then statements. They're conditionals. They aren't about the actual world, but, uh, you know, hypothetical situations. Okay, they don't make statements about what's actually happening in the world, but um, just uh, considering possibilities. If X were to happen, then Y would follow. A hypothetical syllogism, as a syllogism, it has two premises and one conclusion, and it's completely made up of hypotheticals. So premise one in a hypothetical syllogism would be if P, then Q. We're very familiar with that kind of conditional at this point. Uh, premise two then says, if Q, then R. And when we accept both of these premises, uh, the only possible conclusion we could derive uh, is if P, then R. Okay, uh, why is that? Uh, well, this one actually, you know, is kind of visually uh, uh, obvious in a way. Uh, P implies Q. Q implies R. And the conclusion just cuts out the, the middle term here. Uh, it says that P implies R. And so sure enough, if it is the case that P implies Q, if that's true, and it is the case that Q implies R, that's true, well then this follows necessarily. Um, these true premises as true would have to imply uh, a true conclusion, okay? So, you know, if we look at an actual argument here, we can fill anything in for P, Q, and R. Okay, so an example of this might be uh, if, I am a Clark College student, then I attend a Washington school. Okay, we already know that that's a true claim. It has the, uh, a, an antecedent that is a sufficient for the consequent, which is necessary for it. Let's introduce another true claim. Uh, if I attend a Washington school, then I attend a U.S. school. Uh, as Washington is, of course, a state inside the U.S., uh, this antecedent here, attending a Washington school, does uh, give us all that we need to infer the uh, consequent that I attend a, a U.S. school. And attending a U.S. school is necessary for attending a Washington school. Uh, so then the conclusion is, you know, essentially what I have here is uh, I am a Clark College student is my P term. Uh, I attend a Washington school is my Q term. Here I have attending a Washington school is my Q term and attending a U.S. school is my R term. Okay, so P implies Q and Q implies R. So I'm going to make my conclusion P implying R. So I go up here to my original P term. I say if I am a Clark College student, then, and I, and I capture my R term, I attend a U.S. school. And sure enough, uh, you know, premise one is true. Okay, Attend, uh, and premise two is also true. Attending a Washington school, uh, if you were to do that, you would you would be attending a U.S. school. Uh, and so, because these premises are true, the conclusion uh, cannot possibly be false. It it follows necessarily. Okay, it just cuts out this middle term and leads us straight from my initial uh, antecedent to my final consequent. Okay, so if there is a case uh, where we build out an argument that has this form and it has a false conclusion, it must mean that one or the other premises is false. In other words, it doesn't capture an actual 
you know, relationship where the, pe the, the antecedent is sufficient for the consequent, uh, that that, you know, it's not a true um, if then, it's not a true hypothetical that works, okay? Uh, so uh, this is a valid argument form. Um, a, a false conclusion would mean one or two false premises. Uh, but as long as those premises uh, are all true, the conclusion follows necessarily uh, as true.